Hello, welcome back to our channel. I'm Jolie Samako, owner of Southern Charm Wreaths, where we make beautiful wreaths and arrangements, which is what we're gonna be making today. So if you like all things silk flowers, make sure to give us a follow. Um, we do a lot of tutorials for wreath making and arrangements and um, any, anywhere in any way you can use silk flowers. We kind of do it here on our channel. And I'm so honored to have you here with us today. So we've got you here on Facebook. We've also got you here on YouTube. And we also have TikTok in the house. Woohoo! So welcome. Um, comment below if you have any questions. Also, I'd like to know where everybody is watching from. I love to see how far uh, the, our little business, <laughs> our little videos go all the way around the world. So w welcome, Jill. Welcome. Let me uh, pull up your comments over here on the Facebook, uh, the Facebook, so we can see everybody's comments over there. Um, and uh, let's get started. So I'm just going to try to be as educational as possible for you. I like my videos to be informative and not so entertaining, if that makes sense. Not that there's anything wrong with entertaining, it's just not my personality. Um, but we're gonna be making something with our uh, container. I got this, um, I don't know, you can get these containers pretty much anywhere. I wanna say this is about um, five inches wide. And remember when you pick out your containers, you know, the width, matters to what you want to put in it. I wanted something a little bit smaller to put on a bedside table or to put on a, a coffee table or um, to put on a desk in the office, a nurse's station, um, to give to the teacher, you know, something that that little small little gift or small little arrangement, if that makes sense. All right, so I already prepared the container and this one, um, all I did, I didn't hot glue this one. This one is a ceramic. Um, if you were going to ship and you want to make this more permanent, you're, you're not going to want to hot glue your foam in, okay? So this one, I just made the foam using desert foam um, a slightly larger than the container. And then I just used a lot of uh, muscle, which I don't have, so it took a while to... <laughs> to shove it in <laughs> and it's like secure it's not going to go anywhere okay so you don't always have to hot glue you know for these containers that I want to keep and I don't want to put any hot glue in I would um, I just put the put the foam in without it if you were shipping you can still ship it if it's ceramic but if you are and you want it to be a little more permanent what I would do is just hot glue on piece of um, duct tape on the bottom and then put your foam on the hot glue and that way anybody can just rip it out when they're done with it. All right, so um, we got Patty from Atlanta. Welcome. Wreath of the Month Club member Vicki is in the house. Welcome the Charmers. I love it. I love it. Um, Ohio's here, Knoxville, Tennessee. Love it. Mississippi, Nova Scotia, Canada. Amazing, amazing. All over the world. I'm absolutely so blessed that you are here um, and Hopefully you'll find this informational. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I've already prepared it by putting my foam in. I put a little bit of like moss on top of it. You can still see the foam. I'm okay with that. So just the trick of the trade. Um, when I first started, you know, I didn't know any better and I would just shove a bunch of foam. I mean, a bunch of moss right on top. In fact, you know what I used to do? Hot glue the moss on top thinking, well, that's just easier to do wrong don't hot glue your moss on top what happens with the hot glue is it will harden and then you it makes it harder to get your stems in so you don't want to hot glue all i did was laid um, a layer a thin layer of this uh, artif it's not artificial moss it's actual moss but it's sort of preserved it used to be green but now it's a little brown i'm okay with that i'm just going to layer it on a little bit i also would put way too much moss on when i first started so what happens is if you put too much moss on, the hot glue will attach to that moss and pull the moss down into the desert foam. So then technically your 
stem is not hot glued to the moss. Does that make sense? And it will make it come out a lot easier. Therefore, I don't feel like you have a very good quality construction. We got KC in the house. Oh, my son just moved to KC. <clears throat> Conway, South Carolina is not far from us. Okay, so that's the foam. We've got it started. The next thing I'm going to do is green our base. Okay, so this is where, you know, I feel like it's up to you what you want to do for beginners. And I know for me it was easier as a beginner to uh, use greenery to form my um, foundation, my form, you know, shape. Um, and that way I knew where to put flowers, right? So I like to start with greenery, but obviously you don't. I've also made really pretty arrangements like this one where we don't start with greenery, um, we just start with flowers um, and create, and then we throw in a little bit of greenery as an accent, all right? So you don't always have to start with greenery, but I think if you're a beginner, you you know, it makes it easier. And y'all, what do y'all think? Oh my gosh, I don't think I'm selling this one. I wanna keep it for myself. This is what we taught our wreath making of the month club members to make. Oh my gosh, is this not the prettiest thing? Look how fat that wreath is. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. They also got a kit to purchase it all. Like they could just buy the kit and it arrives to them and they can make it for themselves. I absolutely love that wreath. It's one of my favorite ones. And what's so versatile about this wreath is the the coloring, the coloring. Even though it's a uh, monochromatic right now, they could add hot pink, they could add a yellow, they could add, um, what other color, peach, uh, they could uh, add um, purple. Um, you know, there's just so many different options. Red for patriotic. It's just a very versatile piece for a foundation. You can leave it as is, or you can add more. Okay, I'm gonna quit playing with that. And we're gonna get to greening our base. Greening our base. I hope everybody is having a wonderful Friday. I am so looking forward to the weekend. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is just uh, put the greenery into the foam. I'm gonna use hot glue. I've got my glue pan over here. It's um, I'm just dipping the hot glue in. And when I put hot glue on my stem, I don't want to put so much that it puddles on the foam. Because what that will happen is, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you have a lot of hot glue, then it's hard to put stems through it, right? So all I'm gonna do is do a little bit of hot glue and I'm gonna look and see where do I want the height. Remember, I just want this to be kind of small, um, a smaller arrangement. So I think I'm good with that height right there. <clears throat> Is anybody doing anything for the weekend? Anything fun? All right, so now I'm gonna determine, now that I got my height established, I'm gonna come over and determine how far out I want my arrangement to be. All right, so I zoomed in for you guys over on Facebook and YouTube. All right, so like how far out do I want this to be? I'm kind of happy with that. Let me see if I want it any further in. Maybe just a tad further. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim these down. I think they're the same. Maybe right about there. All right, so I'm looking at the top and I'm rounding it that way. So I'm trying to determine how far out I want it to come. Y'all, if you want more detailed information and training on silk flowers, we are doing our master class. We're hosting our master class um, this at the later later this month. We'll be going all over all of this information. Here, let me post that link right here. <clears throat> We've got it pinned, pinned to the comments. Pinned to the comments on Facebook, and it's pinned to the top. 
on YouTube. I'm not sure where it pins on the um, TikTok, but I know I pinned it. All right, you see how we're just moving? Now let's move around. I am gonna go ahead and do four corners, but we don't want it to look like four corners. Probably should have had my moss up, my foam up just slightly higher, but we'll make do. The one thing about silk flowers, it is very forgiving. Unlike, you know, I'm sure there's other tricks that the florists will tell you, so are fresh flowers, but um, that's not my jive. My jam is the silks. So in the spring arrangements masterclass, we're gonna be doing five days five days of arrangements and they're going to be of all shapes and sizes hopefully i have enough of this we're going to be doing 10 arrangements total we've already got we, once you sign up there's a member portal you get invited to we already have training inside the portal so if you join right now, you can already start training and learning. Like, and, and we're going to teach, you know, how to start. When I first started arrangements, I was like, I just didn't know where to start. This might be too much. We'll see. I didn't know where to start. And then you got, once you get excited starting, then you're like, where do I stop? I don't know when to stop. <laughs> Has anybody relate to that? All right, I think I'm just going to place this in. I probably should have brought over another one of these. Let me see if I have one more. All right, so what I did was I created that round look, okay? And now what I wanna do, so this was sort of on the, you know, level, and now what I wanna do, and we've already got the top, and this was level, and now what I wanna do is sort of fill in between, and I'm trying to envision a line, okay? So it's um, not an actual line, but one that it's in your mind's eye. Okay, so now I'm trying to just fill in between the top and the side. <clears throat> so one of the things I think um, is lacking is I've always wanted to learn the, like not necessarily just shove everything in kind of look. Not that there's anything wrong with that if you like that, you know, but I just was always wanted something that was had a little shape to it, a little, um, I don't know, more professional look. And so I've been studying as much as I can about flower arranging and just looking and studying books and pictures. And what I've done is I've kind of broken it down into a formula. Is that right? Like it, it looks like, it looks like a pattern to me. Every time I see a flower arrangement, I'm like, I could break down that pattern, and then I come over here and I try to incorporate it. And so that's one of the things I wanted to share, you know, with our um, arrangements class. All right, what I'm going to do before we put in more, and before we put in flowers, what I want to do is, do you see where we have now? We have a good uh, foundation so this determines everything else okay how far out you come how deep do you go all of that is determined right here so now we can move on to our next thing and that is another greenery because I just love greenery greenery definitely um, helps with texture um, and it also will help you know fill it in but I love when you make this one is going to be slightly the same but not quite the same so it's like a same shade but it's a little bit different leaf 
And so it's a little lighter green and it's a different leaf. And you see what I'm saying? Like your eye is gonna be playing off of the different textures of the leaves and it adds texture to the overall arrangement. <clears throat> Looking for questions. For the greenery, this is shikaboo leaf and this is boxwood. All right, I'm just cutting off some pieces. Now we're gonna add this in between and I thought that this was too long. Um, it probably would be okay, but I wanted to break it down just a little bit more. So I'm gonna pull off a couple of these little um, branches, leaves, whatever you wanna call them on the ends. That way I can sink it into the foam slightly more. These little pieces we save. I know some people are like, what? You save that stuff? I like to put it in my bows on my wreaths, so I save it. It adds texture to that too. All right, I wanna show you the, can you see the difference that that makes with that one greenery? Ginger, thank you. I love this container too. Where do y'all get your containers? Um, that's one of the things we're gonna talk about in our um, class, our, um, our master class, is where do you get your containers? <clears throat> where do you source your flowers? Containers really can be anything, honestly. If you're creative, I've used cereal bowls as containers. All right, we're just gonna cut this one. Just filling in around that first greenery. See how it's starting to fill out? When I come on live with you guys, I have never made this one before. I've not made this. I'm just trying to figure it out as I go. I think that's part of the fun. Y'all get to see me troubleshoot things. All right, now I'm gonna go a little bit. So all I've done is gone around. And now I want to dro drop this down, okay? So I'm gonna go in between but low now. So we went over there, I'm gonna come on this side. Get a little more length. All right, so where did we go? We have one here, one here. So this greenery is starting to break the plane of the container. Okay, now let me just look. I know I need one right there. I'm gonna take this one right here where I feel like it's uh, dipping in slightly. My line is just not as well established right there. So I'm just gonna put that in right there. All right, and then I use my turntable and I sort of Roll it around and see if it has a uh, shape still. <clears throat> okay, so now from here, you can add more greenery if you want, but I'm like, let's shift gears and add some flowers because I wanna make room for flowers. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm wondering if I do these first, these are larger. 
Love these. These are, um, all right, let's see, how long do we want them? I like the flower part, but I'm not a fan of the leaves for this arrangement. These are called um, PG Hydrangea. It is um, plastic, so it's not like a true silk. But y'all, if you if you're the one that like is like plastic, did she say aquarium flowers that you put in a fish tank? That's not what plastic flowers are these days. If you can look closely, there are um, really pretty shades of deep blue all the way down to a um, like a sea foam green and then a, a little green and there's just a hint of um, coloring right in this. And so it looks very realistic even though it's not. So plastic flowers have come a long way. All right, I'm gonna trim this, but I can use this to fill in, so don't get rid of it, but I am think I'm gonna go ahead and take off these leaves, and I'll create this little shorter piece. We're gonna sink this in, there's one. The other thing about silk flowers is it's layering. You can quit anytime you want, or you could layer one more element as long as it adds to the overall design. You don't want to add it if it doesn't, if it takes away from the design. We've got one more over here. Let me trim that back slightly. So these are also really good to um, add in your Etsy shop if you already have silk flowers. Sometimes you have silk flowers, but it's not enough for a wreath. And so you're like, what am I going to do? And you could just pull out a little container um, that you've purchased, I don't know, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, dollar store, and put together a really cute little arrangement. Anything can be, um, you know, um, what you call it, spray painted. All right, so what I wanted to do when I pulled out these blue hydrangeas is to incorporate the blue that is on the container. So another trick is to for looking professional. You guys, I'm giving away all the secrets. <laughs> what am I gonna say for the masterclass? Oh my gosh. One of the things that you do um, when you're creating a cohesive look for your arrangements is to make sure that the arrangement container um, flows in with the arrangement. So the container is as important as the flowers that you put into it. That's what looks, that's what makes it look like a professional, um, design if that makes sense a professional something that a professional's made like a florist the first greenery's name is shikaboo all right so you see that so i could stop right here if i like this and this is all i want to put in it maybe i have a customer who is limited on their price point um, this could be something that i give to them and maybe just fill in with these extra leaves all right well, we're not going to do that. We're not stopping there. We're not stopping there. Let's add in some roses. All right, so these are um, rose spray is what they're called, a rose spray. Let me see. Um, I don't see any comments over on um, TikTok. You guys, if you're watching over on TikTok and you see and hear everything, make sure to give a heart or a something so I can see that the video is working. All right, so now I'm just going to trim these off. Let me see how far before I just start trimming. Aren't these pretty? All 
right, these are little spray roses. Let me just see if sometimes we can open them and sometimes we can't. Ooh, how pretty is that? So we could open this one a little bit more if we needed a little more um, presentation. Isn't that pretty? So it went from here to here. So you need a little bit more. Don't be afraid to manipulate your flowers. <clears throat> All right, we've got this one. Let's go ahead and I'm going to increase the size of this one slightly. Hi, Deborah. Welcome. Jill says, I have learned so much by watching you. Oh, Jill, that makes my day. Y'all know I give God all the glory. And I just have fun with flowers. Thank you for allowing me to come into your home and your life. Let's see if this is going to stay. Sometimes it will. If you want to get your steamer out, you could sometimes steam these to open up slightly. It's called reflexing. All right. I like it. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add these. All right, I'm going to put one right through here. I think I like that. I don't want to sink it too far. I really want to be able to see the flower. Okay, so we've got one there. Let's go ahead and do another one over here. Okay, and I'm rolling it around. Cut it just a little bit more. There. So we've got two. I'm going to grab one more of the larger head on this one spray. Yes, yeah, steamer, I just got it off of Amazon. I mean, it's nothing fancy. It's something you just steam your clothes with. It also helps take wrinkles away. You can use it to add wrinkles and take wrinkles away. Too bad I don't have anything like that on my face. We need help with wrinkles these days. All right, now I'm coming over here. So if you notice, the placement is between the two or the hydrangeas. that a little bit more downward okay so do you see where we've placed our florals again I think at this point if you want to stop you could really pretty we're gonna add in our little rosebuds though I'm going to separate this. So this one is a little bit smashed. I'm just going to maneuver it with my hands slightly, but you can definitely uh, steam this. Welcome Kentucky in the house. All right, so I've got that one there. Are we starting to notice any geometrical shapes
Thank you so much. All right, we've got this one over here. I haven't been dipping them in glue. I've been forgetting to do that, but you can dip them in glue. I'm going to do this one in glue because it's a little smaller. Let's do this one right about here. What does, what do roses remind you of? Anything? Roses, these to me would be really pretty if you're doing corsages. All right, I want this to be long. I might have to put a stem on that one. All right, where do I want this one? I want this one to go right about there. And then we want one over here. I think I might do one of these. Trim it a little bit more. These even have uh, thorns on them. Roses with fake thorns. I love roses. I don't like red. I'm not a fan of the red roses, though. All right, I've got one more over here, and I don't want to this to be all alone on my craft table, so let's find a place and just put it in. I think I'm going to do it right about here. Okay. So we've got those flowers and then another little flower. Oh, I had one more rose. I forgot. All right, let me look at these flowers. Okay, I like that these go, these are pushers. These are also artificial. So what you could do is you could push these up and down depending on how much width you want um, and uh, what do you call it width yeah width if you don't like a big mass like i'm going to take off this greenery come to me this greenery looks too what do you call it um fish tank aquarium that's what i was like trying to say i think this yellow is just going to make this pop a little bit more Right. What do we do with our filler flowers? I know our Wreath of the Month Club members can tell us that. How do you know where to put filler flowers? What do you think of the coloring there? Be, again, don't be afraid to manipulate your flowers. I'm just taking off that greenery that I don't like. Because um, I know you've probably been somewhere shopping and you love flowers and you're like, oh, I love that flower. But then you're like, oh, I'm not a fan of that leaf or I'm not a fan of that part of the bush. And then you're, but I want to show, I want to tell you that, you know, depend, it depends on how much of that 
is on the bush. I'm going to move this over a little bit. I just saw the placement of the other. I'm going to move this one over. Don't be afraid to, you know, obviously if it's the whole bush that's the bad stuff that you don't like and you only want to like a little bit of it, I wouldn't necessarily do that. But if it's majority of the bush that I like is the flower and I'm not a fan of the greenery on it, don't be afraid to take that off. Right, so what you do is you, you, you put the filler flower in between your focal flowers. You fill in. I think I'm going to go right through here. There's that. This is going to be such a cute little uh, gift idea for a loved one, somebody in a nursing home who doesn't want to water or something, which is always me, um, a teacher. Where would you put this, you guys? Where else? to feed this back on oh that's an interesting um Enchanted Vines is in the house, you guys. If y'all don't follow Enchanted Vines, you should go follow her. She does amazing work. All right, let me just look at this. Okay, I'm thinking the balance is off a little bit only because I need another yellow right there. We have a lot of designers, a lot of creative designers. You guys should follow all of them if you want inspiration. Ooh, nightstand. That's a good one, Glam Mercy. Coffee table, says Deborah. Um, that's awesome. Love those ideas. Okay. So I'm just looking. It feels like we could use one more over here and then we'll be done. I'm just looking for balance. Okay. I like that. Do y'all like that? Um, I'm not, you don't want to be so worried about perfection. I want this to look real. And when you get real flowers from a florist, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, perfection because nothing in nature is perfect. Some things grow a little wonky or a little sideways or some leaves stick out a little further than others. But overall, I want the shape to be um, in, you know, a good round shape, okay? So I think this is good. Again, at this point, you could stop if you wanted. I wanted to look at this other greenery. I'm gonna see though if I can make it work because if I can't divide it enough, then I might not add it. Let's look at this one. Definitely like this one better. I don't think I'm going to use this whole thing. 
going to divide. I'm going to put a pick on this one, though. Get a little length. There's that. Just going to use this to sort of fill in wherever I feel there is a hole. This greenery also adds another um, texture. Maybe I just pulled that one off. Let me get that back on. It also is going to brighten up all that dark green. Let me move this closer to me. Our, our Arrangements Masterclass does start at the end of the month, but you can join it right now and start um, watching our training videos to get you started. We're going to be answering a lot of questions, like how to incorporate larger elements in an, in an arrangement, we talk about shipping if those for those who are interested in learning how to ship for their Etsy shop. So in this one long. We have an exclusive Facebook group community. So it's all going to be inside of a Facebook group. If you're not on Facebook, we stream it live to our online portal. So you'll get access to our online portal. So you can watch all of the videos and take part. I think this is going to be my last piece. Right there. At the end of the class, you're going to receive a booklet that you can save. It'll have all, it's going to be your arrangements Bible. It'll have all of the information in there, all the recipes, all of the products, where we bought them, the SKU numbers, all of that will be right there in a quick, easy, downloadable book. Whoops, my flower fell out. Let me add that back. I need to add some glue on it. And a lot of people are asking, well, how long do we have access to the videos? You have access to them forever. For it doesn't expire. And you can watch the replays if you can't be live with us because, you know, life is busy. Five days is a long time to be designing. And if you can't do all five days, you can just join the days you can and then watch the replays la later. All right, you guys, I think we're done. We're done. So how do I know how to price this? So we're going to go over that in the arrangements class. But I, um, I, what I would do is I would find the um, cost and add it up and then multiply that times three. That will include enough for labor, uh, usually the shipping. Um, that usually just covers everything, all the extra fees that are involved with that. You know, taking money online, you, there's always fees in, involved. Y'all, do y'all like this? Isn't that pretty? Isn't that beautiful? So you could go around the edge to make sure all of the foam is hidden. And I love how this drops down and it incorporates my container up into my arrangement. Love how this turned out. This machine is called a steel pick machine. We have more information about that on our blog if you go to southerncharmries.com. All right, you guys, um, let me know, comment below if you have any questions about anything on our spring masterclass 
Um, again, we've got it discounted for you if you want to go over there. It is a make spring, sorry, makespringarrangements.com. Just go to makespringarrangements.com. Read all the information that there is available there. Um, and we've got a lot of frequently asked questions that we could probably answer for you. And you'll have all of the, you could just see exactly what we're going to be doing. Um, but we're going to be making 10 arrangements and partnering with uh, one of my favorite suppliers. So there will be a few kits available. And I'm excited about that. And I'm excited about the masterclass. So make sure to come join in us. Come join us inside our Spring Arrangements Masterclass. Just go to makespringarrangements.com. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for allowing me into your life today. It is such an honor to be here and share my love of floral and floristry with you. If you are a beginner florist, uh, make sure to give us a follow because we have a lot of quick and easy designs and tips for you to give you a lot more confidence in making things for your own home or to gift. Um, like this is going to be a perfect gift, okay? I will see y'all soon. I won't be here next week. We'll have a guest, Lori Ann, um, live on our YouTube channel. So make sure to join us next Thursday live on YouTube, and she will be there um, with the tutorial. I'll be out of town, so I want to thank Lori Ann for filling in while I'm gone. And I will see y'all next time. Have a blessed day, and thanks for following us. I wasn't even looking at the camera. I'm so sorry. I forgot the camera was angled at